Hello and welcome to my latest uh, preview video which is for Neon. Now Neon is an AUV3 uh, audio editor and clip launcher and I'm very excited to show you this today. So one of the most requested features from you guys has been for a, a standalone audio clip launcher and um, I combine that with an audio editor that brings a lot to the table and uh, since this is a preview video I want to uh, go briefly over all the various aspects of Neon and then obviously I'll do my usual tutorials uh, further along the, the, the road. So as you can see here this is the main interface uh, we have a stereo loop uh, loaded in and if you saw that I brought up this little overview at the top of the screen which we can uh, use to navigate the, uh, the audio file. Now anyone that's familiar with Helium will re recognise the media bay which we can access from this button in the top right corner and this gives us access to all the files we've got stored within Neon and we can preview these just by double tapping on uh, an item to start the preview and then we can just tap and move between items and find the actual audio file we want to edit. When we found the one we want to edit we just tap on that file and hit the load button and once loaded we can uh, begin playback and monitor using the VU meter on the right. Now I'm sure most of you know how an audio editor works so I'm not going to go into detail but it supports the usual pinch to zoom and um, once you zoom in you'll see that there's an area on this overview uh, that's highlighted uh, that's showing the area we're looking at and we can actually click and drag in this overview area to navigate the file. Now when loaded as an AUV3 you might need that extra screen space back so you can turn the overview off from settings or you can just tap and hold on the menu button to uh, toggle it on or off. Now most editing features work on a selection or an, on the entire file so if you've got a selection uh, it will uh, affect the selection. So you can create a selection you can drag it around using the ruler. Now usually Helium starts up in uh, time mode which is measured, it measures everything in seconds. Uh, we currently set two beats and bars and if you look on the grid settings it, it was time intervals in beats and bars but we can switch to uh, uh, hours, minutes and seconds and uh, pick a, a grid option that snaps to one second intervals which is quite traditional for audio editors. Uh, with that in mind, I've got a selection here, we could uh, simply do a quick uh, fade in by hitting the fade button on the side toolbar and uh, picking fade in. Uh, if, if we make a mistake, we hit the undo, it's all nice and quick and then just a fade out. Yep. So simple as that. Now fade and crop happen to be two items that have their own button on the, that left toolbar but most of the things are hidden away uh, under the operations uh, sub uh, toolbar so we've got a whole lot of tools in here and they include the ability to clear a section ins insert additional space reverse normalize invert phase you can convert something from like this from stereo into mono at the click of a button um, and as i say all operations are usually quite quick um, and then once we've converted to mono, uh, there's a whole bunch of other options, effects and things we can apply to a selection uh, from the operations menu by clicking the apply effect. And we get a whole host of uh, stuff in here which uh, we can apply on the fly. But I'm going to go over that. I'll go over a few of them a little bit later. I just want to backtrack a little and talk about uh, importing and exporting of, of audio because that's the most important thing really with a, an audio editor. Now if we, we talked about the media bay earlier and within the media bay there are tons of options for import export. We can, uh, we can create files and folders in, in here and actually organize files and that's great for clip launching. But to get things in and out of here we can import and export to the files app or to audio share. Uh, but probably the most obvious and best way of importing and exporting is simply drag and drop. So if you've got the Files app, we could simply drag uh, directly from the Files app uh, into um, either into the editable area. Uh, and when you do this, um, it actually imports the file into the audio pool. 
uh, there it is and we can play that back I can drag straight into the um, the, uh, the media bay itself and it will just import the clip without loading it and of course you can easily uh, just drag and drop the other way back to the files app as simple as that so now I want to take a look at, uh, at Neon host, uh, hosted inside AUM and I'm going to show you the recording feature and for this example I've got a simple drum uh, loop set up in Digisticks and we're going to record that into Neon now if you notice the Neon background is actually blue and there's the word Neon in there and if you notice just above the VU meters on the right you've got this uh, blue area which we can we can change uh, and that is reflected back in AUM so if you're using this as a clip launcher it's a nice way to uh, customize each of the uh, the lanes in AUM so you can identify which clip is which now without sync enabled if I hit the record button it's just gonna start recording whatever input is coming through so as I start the drum machine going you'll see it's uh, it started recording and when I stop the AUM transport it keeps going until I decide to stop inside of uh, Neon uh, by pressing the record button a second time now it's important at this stage if you've recorded anything you want to keep but you save that uh, although when you hit the record button again it will prompt you uh, to save or discard the changes and then it will immediately go into recording again now if you're recording ideas uh, and you want to record various ideas into a single file you can do that by enabling the append option within settings so if you turn on the uh, append recordings uh, then every recording you make will be uh, end on end um, and this is quite useful for note takers and things as well um, it's probably not a feature that you'd want to use every day but it's a nice feature that's tucked away inside of Neon now you'll notice that uh, that was a stereo recording um, I'll just turn the, uh, the um, append off uh, but if I wanted to record say a mono recording I simply uh, press the menu button and pick new recording uh, I'm going to be asked whether I want to save that, I don't, and I can just pick mono and anything we record from now will be forced to mono, even if it's a stereo source. Now I'm going to enable sync mode and show you the difference, because when we're in sync mode and we hit record, it sits there and waits for the AUM transport to start. And uh, when the AUM transport starts, uh, Neon will start recording. Now. That's all well and good, but you might only want to record when you hear a particular sound coming through, when it, a sound passes a certain threshold. And if you tap and hold on the record button, we can turn on that option to record uh, when we hit a trigger level. Now the trigger level is set on the VU meter on the right. If we drag your finger up and down on the VU meter, um, here look, uh, you can set a point at which recording starts so now when I uh, start and stop the AUM transport uh, the recording will only start when the tr when the VU meter level gets above that default trigger level so let's have a go at recording a loop um, now I'm going to change the uh, the file to stereo format because I'm recording a stereo source from uh, Digisticks and I'm going to enable sync because I want the sync start to uh, 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 to kick in. The problem you've got is that if I just uh, start the AUM transport here, it's going to start recording at the right point, but it's very difficult to know where to stop. And we could uh, record a certain number of bars and then trim it. Or we can take advantage of a feature built into Neon that allows us to capture an exact number of frames for a loop. Now we can do this by long pressing the record button and choosing the uh, record length limit option. And we can set a number of uh, beats or a number of seconds depending on which time mode we're in. Um, so if I change the time mode to uh, beat bars and beats uh, and I go and long press record and pick the um, record length option we now we're now able to set a number of beats and this is pretty exact it's, it's this is a temporary thing it it it, it won't it's a, not a permanent thing so it's not like you're going to leave it on by accident um but the great thing now is once we start recording 
uh, it will record exactly the number of beats we asked it to and then stop and we should have a perfect loop now so I'll zoom in a little bit um, there's a quick way of uh, selecting everything within the edit and that is simply to long press the loop button and that will select everything within the edit and turn loop mode on so if I now start the host transport you should be able to hear now a perfect loop and uh, yeah it seems to be looping just fine now that's great if you have uh, loops at specific tempos or you recorded your own loops but what happens if you've got pre-existing loops and you want them to fit a tempo well that's where the warp option comes in now I have this loop here which is a 120 beats per minute loop and I've got the metronome on so you can hear that it's in in time with the AUM metronome but if I change the metronome's uh, uh, beat per minute uh, to something like 100 and play back you'll hear that the two are completely out of sync now I pointed out the warp button on the on the top toolbar but if you long press that warp button you get a bunch of options uh, one of which is the original BPM of the loop and the second option is the uh, ha it, the transpose value in semitones now this is 120 beats per minute loop so everything's okay I could just enable the warp button and now when we play back everything is in sync Now you notice there we dropped the BPM to 100 beats per minute but I could try uh, speeding it up to something like 140 and see what that sounds like. So the great thing about the warp it's doing a time stretch to meet the, temp the uh, tempo of the host without affecting pitch. But if we long press on the warp button we can uh, alter the pitch on the fly and get some quite interesting results. And that would probably work better at the 100 beats per minute as we had it before. Yeah, that's much better. So you could take an original loop and then make it sound kind of quite different. Uh, so that's, that's the warp mode. Now the great thing about Neon, not only is it an editor, but it's also a clip launcher. And if you look here, I've got uh, Neon hosted as a, an instrument in an instrument slot. Now I'm going to turn Sync off here because launch mode works independent of Sync. So you've got to turn that off. Now the other thing to notice is look, no record button when we're in an instrument slot. So you can only record when you're in an insert slot. Now you can turn on this little launch button that appears uh, to the left of the uh, neon icon and when AUM's transport is running we can click the launch button to launch the clip and notice that starts and stops at bar boundaries but please remember to use that feature you need to make sure that sync is turned off so as an alternative, if you're not using AUM and you haven't got access to the parameters that we expose, you can do the same by MIDI. Uh, if you look under Launcher Options in Settings, you can set a, uh, a key and a channel and mode to trigger each of these uh, instances of Neon. Now Neon does support the general pasteboard, so you can cut, copy, paste, duplicate and merge, just as you would expect. Uh, but I wanted to go back to the operations and applying effects because this is something I touched upon earlier and I never really explained fully. So you can actually pick an effect here and um, we can preview this by playing the loop and then hitting the preview button within the effect. Now we might have to turn the mix level up to hear anything but we can change parameters and get some settings that we like and then we can either apply this to the whole mix or as I'm going to do now I'm going to make a selection and only apply the echo to that second snare so let's give that a go 
And if I play that back, so let's uh, loop it just so we can hear it a little bit better in context. And since I had the mix bias towards the effect itself, uh, it's taking the volume down a bit. So let's just normalize it and get that back up a little bit and try again. And that's much better. So one last example uh, I'm going to show you is um, the ability to remove noise from the background of vocals, for instance. As you can see here, I've got a mic connected up and uh, we've got uh, neon in the in, in the uh, insert effects slot so we can record now i have enabled uh, the ability to record when my vo voice hits a particular trigger level and what i'm going to do i'm going to just record in here a series of vocals and i appreciate you can actually hear this at the moment uh, the reason is i'm recording it would go straight through and create feedback if i let it go but what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn my air conditioner on <laughs> halfway through speaking uh, so you can hear this uh, noise reduction in action. Now this is purely for vocals, but it could be very useful if you've um, if you're wanting to clean up anything you've you've done online or anything. So let's preview it first. Test of talking without the air conditioner. And this is a test of talking with the air conditioner going. It should be quite evident that the air conditioner is making a lot of noise. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to remove that using one of the plugins. So if we hit the operations button and pick apply effect, we're going to pick the uh, vocal noise reduction plugin here. And I think you can you can drag and drop these anywhere you want. Now I'm going to turn on the preview this and we're going to hear what it sounds like when the air conditioner, conditioner comes in. And this is a test of talking with the air conditioner going. It should be quite evident that the air conditioner is making a lot of noise. I did turn that noise reduction up to maximum so it does affect the voice a little but it works really really well and that's just an example of some of the plugins we have in neon and how easy it is to preview before you start applying anything to the to the audio file itself. So that's just about it for now. Uh, again, thank you for watching this preview. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again soon.